Good morning and welcome to church today. So glad that you're here with us, even online. So I wanna welcome you and I don't have any announcements, but I'm gonna start with a reminder, a reminder that we are witnesses to the love God poured into us. And we are witnesses of God's love, sharing it with each person we meet. And we are witnesses to everyone we encounter. Then we're all little children like us, sisters and brothers together in God's family. So would you join me in prayer? Lord, when we are confused, give us peace. When we are afraid, give us peace. When we are lost in grief, Lord, give us peace. Oh God, we pray, meet us in this room where we are and grant us your peace. In your name we pray, amen. The reading today is from Psalm 4. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? Selah. But know that I, that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart, more than in the season that their grain and wine increased. 
I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Would you please join with me in prayer? Holy God, we come before you and your majesty, your goodness and your mercy washing over us as you reveal your glory to us. We confess that we have sinned against you through our thoughts, words, actions, and inaction. We bring our sins before you and repent, asking for your forgiveness. And we are so thankful for your love and grace that hold us at all times. You are with us even in those hard and distant moments. We lift up all who are in pain, Lord. Those who are hurting from spiritual, emotional, physical, or mental pain, we just ask that you are, for, you are with them and that you are showing them your love, your peace, and your goodness. And we ask that you be with them in those dark times and illuminate the way that glorifies you while also bringing comfort and peace to them. And we pray individually and as a church that all of our thoughts, words, and deeds be glorifying and pleasing to you. And that as we prepare our hearts for the message that Pastor Barry has prepared, that we receive it and be shaped more like you. That we would decrease as you increase. We pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning online. I'm glad that uh, you have made some time to come and worship the Lord. I just want to let you know that uh, we have a number of friends checking in, not just from our community here, but from further abroad. So we're glad that you've come. Well, anyone who's ever tried to learn a new language will understand the importance of something to decode the character you use to learn language. Sometimes maybe you've tried it on your phone. You know, there's different apps. What makes it all the more challenging if you're trying to learn a language, if you don't know the characters, if you see certain letters, it's, it's good when we all use the same kind of letters, but if it has different character meanings, it's harder to understand. In 1798, Napoleon's men accidentally discovered a crucial piece of history from Egypt. King Ptolemy's, Ptolemy V's, uh, he had a stone that he had written some instruction to his people on, and it had three languages on it. There was Egyptian hieroglyphics, and there was the Demotic script, which was kind of Egyptian language for everyday people, and there was ancient Greek. What that stone did, the Rosetta Stone, was gave archaeologists a reference point to understand Egyptian hieroglyphics because archaeologists at that time knew ancient Greek. What they didn't know was what these other character, this pictographs and these other pictures were. And so being able to understand Greek opened up the door through this Rosetta Stone. And so now that's become a term when there is something that helps us uh, interpret something further to give a greater insight into something. And as we think of reading scripture and who, knowing who God is, Jesus' life and his mission has become for us a Rosetta Stone to understand God's working in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant and as we think of the law and the prophets and the Psalms and how God was working through history, his salvation plan. We understand who God is better because we know Jesus and we can see his life and his ministry and that reveals to us God. Last week, Pastor Patty shared with us the disciples' incredible encounter with a resurrected Jesus. And we read through John's account of Jesus showing up as the disciples were hidden away in that locked room this trembling group of disciples. And they were very much still wrestling with the strangeness of this morning, this Easter morning, and the empty tomb. 
And today, we're going to be in a different part, a different account, another gospel version, translation of what's going on, same morning, but it's kind of part two, so to speak, of working through Jesus, a resurrected Jesus appearing to his disciples. You may be asking the question, well, why do we need to do this again? Why do we need to take a look at the resurrection? For some, I want to say the news of Jesus' resurrection has shifted or become more symbolic. And so when they think of, you know, the writings of Scripture or what it means to follow God, Jesus' resurrection is nothing more than a metaphor for forgiveness and for hope and for goodness and grace. But we really do need to try to see that as we take Luke's uh, gospel into account with the other gospels, this helps us understand that these are not visions, these are not dreams, but eyewitness accounts of what's actually happened. Where people thought and behaved a certain way, and then Jesus, a resurrected Jesus, appears. This morning we're going to take a look at Luke's gospel chapter 24, and starting at verse 36 to 48. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself, Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and blood, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. Two disciples have been on a journey from Jerusalem to a nearby town of Emmaus. They've just come back with the news. You know, they've heard of Mary's seeing Jesus. They've heard of Peter and John seeing Jesus. And then as they've journeyed to their home, they come across this stranger who talks with them along the way and starts to speak of scriptures, looks at the words of Moses and the prophets, and teaches them further. And then they finally realize it is Jesus. And in that moment of realization that it's Jesus who is resurrected, he's gone. And so they've run back to Jerusalem. And just as we declare on Easter morning, where we say, he is risen, and the response is, he is risen indeed, As we think of Easter morning, Mary and Peter and John have said, He is risen! And these two disciples from Emmaus run back to Jerusalem and say, He is risen indeed! We didn't know for sure. We wondered, we wrestled, we wept over the possibility of Jesus' death. But He is risen indeed. And as they're talking, there must have been this mix of emotion. Because as Jesus further appears to other disciples, they're still wrestling with doubts and grief. They're still wondering, is this some kind of hoax? Is this a trick? Maybe I I don't have enough faith. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Because I struggle to believe that dead people come back to life. But yet... I'm holding intention, this knowledge dead people don't come back to life, but more and more of my friends are telling us that the Master, the Messiah, Jesus, is indeed alive. And Luke writes, now suddenly there, as those two disciples have just come back, and maybe those others are still wrestling, 
Jesus is there and he greets them. Peace be with you. It struck me this week that as you look through, that's a phrase that was common in Jewish culture in Jesus' day and earlier, was you would see someone and you'd say, peace be with you. And the response back, you know, oh, and also with you, friend, good to see you. How are you doing? And yet, that term of shalom, of peace, takes on so much greater meaning as these people have been struggling to deal with their fears. And they see Jesus and they wonder if it's a ghost. And Jesus says, peace be with you. Shalom, friends. Pastor Patty touched on this last week. In this moment raises all kinds of questions about what kind of physical body did Jesus have. We need to remember that Jesus was not simply resuscitated. He didn't sort of swoon and, and not die. He was just kind of, you know, some people believe that his body was just a heartbeat too low to detect but still beating. No. Jesus didn't simply just start breathing again. It wasn't like there was some, you know, AED there to give him a jolt of electricity and get his heart going on a a regular rhythm. Jesus was given a resurrected, glorified new body. And the struggle is probably the hardest thing for us to understand is this reality of the resurrection. Because as they looked to Jesus, they could understand it was him, And yet there was something different. The physicality of Jesus was known to them, and yet there were things that weren't known. And this idea of being uh, appearing to the disciples as they walked to Emmaus or others, and then moving through locked doors. I think that this helps us know that this is what it means. When, When the Bible talks about new bodies... And I think there's something else at play here that gives us a window that Jesus, his new body, his resurrected body, is a part of both earth but also of heaven. And Jesus, looking at what's happening, he sees their confusion, their doubts, and he offers that powerful greeting, peace be with you. Peace be with you. That echoes of the words that Jesus said earlier before he went to the cross, before he was crucified. And Jesus was saying to them, here's what's going to happen. And he explained it and he could see they were disturbed. And Jesus said, don't worry. I will be with you. I'll give you my peace. And now he's back. Peace be with you. My peace be with you. Look. Jesus says, I'm real. It's me. It's really me. Trust me. Come and touch me. And as Jesus says those words, and you kind of go deeper into the meaning of when Jesus says, touch and see, it's really a little bit deeper than that. Jesus is calling them to kind of grab hold of his hands. I find that interesting because in John's gospel, when Jesus appears to Mary, and there's this wrestling and struggling, and Jesus says, don't touch me, and yet here in Luke's gospel, Jesus is helping his disciples to understand the truth, and he says, grab hold of me. It's almost as if Jesus is calling them to ground themselves in him, in this reality. I'm real, Jesus says. I'm resurrected. And they're caught in the joy and the wonder and the amazement of it. Hence this swirl of emotion. And Jesus knows they need another demonstration. And so he he looks to them and he says, do you have anything to eat? Do you have anything to eat? I'm a little hungry. If they had any doubts, because... Even though the Jewish people struggled and they didn't believe in ghosts, yet in this culture at this time, there was this way of thinking that when someone died, that their spirit could appear to people. And so, 
you know, I can imagine that some of the disciples are thinking, well, we've heard our neighbors talk about it and talk about spirits and ghosts appearing. And maybe they wrestle themselves with, is, this is Jesus. No, but it can't be. Dead people don't come back to life. And maybe this is a ghost. And Jesus then says, do you have anything to eat? A further proof to them that he is real. Further proof that he is saying, you know, I am here. I am real. I am who I say I am. You can rest assured in this. This is not a dream. You're not having a vision. And ghosts don't eat. And so Jesus has the fish and chips. You can almost imagine that. And after eating, Jesus then leads them further along and says, this is what I've been saying. We've been talking about this, kind of reminding them. Remember remember the conversations. As I headed to Jerusalem, as I headed to the cross, we've been talking about what must happen. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. What I think is important for us to see this morning in this reality of Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, that Jesus becomes the revelation of God's salvation story to us. The nation of Israel has been trying to figure things out. They've been receiving God's blessing. And as God spoke to Abraham and said, I've chosen you and through your descendants... I'm going to bless not only you, but the people of the earth. And so this whole promise that God has given Israel of being a blessing, being a chosen people, being a people of faith, is an invitation to relationship with God. An invitation so that God's shalom restoration can work through his entire creation. And yet... We see it over and over again. Time and time again, Israel fails to understand it. They fail to take hold of God's goodness. And they end up short-circuiting it and saying, you know, I'm God's chosen. I'm special. As we think about that, we need to be careful to not read the Old Testament and have a smug, self-righteous view of Israel. To think, you know, I would never do that. Because the truth is, we do do that. We receive the beautiful invitation from Jesus to follow him. We receive salvation, and then we begin to become self-righteous. And think, it stops with me. It's just about me and God. It's about me getting closer to him. And forget this calling to spread the good word, the good news. Here in this Eastertide moment, this this time where Jesus meets his disciples again in this room, as the two come back from Emmaus and they're talking, and Jesus then appears Jesus is beginning to pull back the veil of God's work, his love. And he starts to talk to them about the old covenant and about God's love there and God's creation. Jesus declares himself as king, the Messiah, God's anointed and chosen one. Then he says, you are witnesses of these things. You've seen it. You're going to be going. The resurrection combined with the cross makes the cross and what God was doing now have sense for them and for us. We saw that last week as Thomas struggled to believe, you know, his fellow disciples. And Jesus shows him. And as Jesus appears the next time and Thomas is finally there, And Thomas had said, I'm not going to believe unless I see. And Jesus appears and says, see, Thomas, here, look. You can really believe that I'm here. I am here. See? 
I find it interesting that Luke's account is further grounding in the reality of the resurrection. As Jesus says, you know, in in John, he says, see Thomas, and then here, and at that point, I don't think Thomas touched him. I have this feeling that Thomas, he just, he saw Jesus, and we read that he responded saying, my Lord and my God. Here in this moment, Jesus says, touch me. Touch me, grab hold of me, be grounded in the truth of who I am, what I've done, and what that means for you and for the whole world. Which means for us now, as we come to the Old Testament, of course we realize that the Lord inspired writers then to speak to a given context. For example, the prophet Jeremiah was speaking to the people in exile, and trying to challenge them to understand what God had for them. But now we can't help but see, through Christ, greater things happening. We can't help but go to the Psalms and read where King David wrote about whatever worship that he was experiencing and praising God in that moment, but have this wider focus and maybe a deeper lens of God at work in Christ, there in the Psalms. This past week, for those of you who have been joining the Free Methodist Church in Canada with this rule of life reading, our reading has been, in the, at least in the Old Testament anyway, in Psalm 7. And as I read Psalm 7, and David writes, Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me. I can't help but read those words and see Jesus Christ there as our true refuge. As our Savior, the one who saves us and delivers us from those who pursue us. Our King, our Messiah calls us to proclaim the truth. This isn't some symbolic thing, but that it is a real and resurrected Jesus. And we're sent out to share about the forgiveness of sins to all nations, Jesus says. He says those words, beginning at Jerusalem. Now, of course, speaking to the disciples, he's saying, you know, it starts here and it spreads out. So for us, the good news is that there's the foreshadowing of The salvation that Jesus offers going broader to the Gentiles and to the world, which we now have the blessing of receiving. But there's also another meaning where Jesus speaks to the disciples in that moment, saying, starting where you are, you're here in Jerusalem. So the witnessing starts here with those around you. Same is true for us as we experience a resurrected Christ. It starts where we are, our Jerusalem, and moves out. The gospel, the good news of Jesus, it's grounded in this world. And it's connected through Jesus to our Heavenly Father. Just as we pray in the way that Jesus taught us to pray, you know, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to take hold of Jesus to live in this world here bringing hope and live in that eternal reality of heaven. That we can rejoice and say, Jesus is risen indeed. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. And Jesus, as you appeared to the disciples, And you further revealed and called them to touch and see. Help us, Lord Jesus, to take hold of who you are. Thank you for the space that you give for us to wrestle, to ask questions, to say we don't fully understand. And then you give us greater faith. Where once we might have just been called to see, Jesus, you call us to not only see, but to touch and see. May we join with that psalmist and say, you know, to be able to taste and see that the Lord is good. 
I pray that you would spur each of us on that follow you, Jesus, to share the good news, the hope which you bring. And we ask it now in your precious and beautiful name, Jesus. Amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still and striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain. This gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I stay And now receive the benediction, the good word. Go now as God's chosen witnesses to share that Christ has risen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed week.